Andrea here. Thank you for stopping by and checking out my channel, Date in the Life of a Trucker's Wife. I am here with my husband, Matt. Hi. And our daughter, Lily. Hi. Way over there, almost off camera. Hi. Hi. And we are here with an Exploration Crate unboxing. And sadly, this is going to be our last Exploration Crate unboxing. And the reason why is because we are planning on starting keto here in a couple weeks. And most of the snacks that are inside these boxes are not keto friendly. So I'm, we're really sad because we have a lot of fun doing these. It was cool. Yeah. There's a lot of cool um, snacks from different countries and we wouldn't get that otherwise right so but i am on the hunt for a keto type of box and they are out there so um be on the lookout if you're interested in learning about some keto friendly snacks that are out there i believe you know there are also snacks that come from different parts of the world but including us as well so it's not quite the same as Exploration Crate that focuses every month on one country. But, um, yeah, we definitely want to fill that void because we enjoy doing this and being surprised by the different snacks that we find. Yes. So, if you watched last month's um, Exploration Crate, we ended up getting opening the box and getting Peru. And there was one item that it was actually, I think, the very first thing we looked at, maybe. And it was a chocolate bar. But it wasn't a chocolate bar for eating. It was a chocolate bar to make hot chocolate, a Peruvian hot chocolate. So I told you in the last um, unboxing that we were going to make this for our next video and share it with you so we can give you an opinion of how it came out. So... If I can, if I can, I recorded um, me actually making the hot chocolate, but my editing technical abilities are still very newbie, so I don't know if I'll be able to figure out how to incorporate it. If I can, you are going to see me making the hot chocolate right here. Okay, so the directions here say to... Break up the chocolate, put it into a pot with three cups of water, boil until dissolved, and then add three cups of ev evaporated milk and stir. So here's the bar. I've already broken it up, and I just have it now in this pot getting ready to boil and melt. Um, this is starting to warm up, so I'm just going to give it a stir just to start incorporating the chocolate. It looks, if you can see here, there's still some chocolate, I, don't know, I guess almost like granules. So I'm just going to keep letting this come up to a boil before I add the evaporated milk. Alright, and while we're waiting for this to finish coming up to a boil, I just wanted to um, point out the ingredients. When I opened the package, I could smell cinnamon right away, and sure enough, there is some. So here are the ingredients. White sugar, hydrogenated vegetable oil, cacao powder, salt, malt with salt, extract, soy lecithin, and clove cinnamon, and vanilla essences. Okay, and now we are steaming here, and... Those granules are now gone. It's incorporated uh, really well. So now I'm just going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to get the evaporated milk poured in here. It says to add three cups. All right, so here we go. to give this a nice stir. And as you can see, it's lightened up a lot. Okay, and I'm just going to get this poured into mugs, and then we are going to try it out. So, I used a clear mug here, so you could see. Um, it's still pretty hot. I made this about 10 minutes ago, and it's still really hot, but some of the chocolate has settled. And basically, the recipe just has you break up the chocolate into water, heat that up to not quite bubbling over boiling, but you want it to get hot. And then you add evaporated milk, and that's it. Um, one of the things I noticed as soon as I opened the bar, uh, I smelled cinnamon, and there is cinnamon in here. So, I saved one...
forget that. Anyways, oh no, <laughs> I thought I dropped it. I think I dropped a piece. I saved a, bit. a little piece of the chocolate just so I could show you. I can't reach, babe. Can you? <laughs> just so you could see what we're working with. It just looks almost like a dark chocolate bar, but um, you can definitely smell the cinnamon in it. And I thought maybe we would just take a bite and just taste it straight up because after I read the ingredients, there is sugar in it. So I thought it was going to be just almost like a baking chocolate bar with no sugar. And we didn't want to try that in the last video. So I'm just going to. Hmm. Definitely taste clove and cinnamon in there. It has, um, I don't know. It's not like milk chocolate. It has a texture to it, but wow, those spices come through, and I like them. I love clove. I love cinnamon. Tastes delicious. So that could we, be a spicy standalone chocolate. It'd be very rich. Yeah. Now I'm almost kind of bummed out. I turned okay. it into hot chocolate because I, I really like that. Mm. That's, That's different. Definitely that would be good. different. I'm excited to try it. What do you think, Lily? Oh, good. She likes it. Now mm -hmm. for the taste test. So we'll taste it in the hot chocolate form. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's really pretty good, you guys. I wish there was more of that taste in there. I don't know, and maybe if we had a spoon with us maybe some of that spice has went to the top as you can see again there's like a top that's layer that's darker but i really really like that mm. that would be a uh, a very good christmas drink it would be a, a good cup after i get done shovel in the driveway and and want to warm up with something spicy you know, I could I could definitely see really that happening. really satisfying. It is. The aromas from those spices. I love it. I really love it. And it's funny you said Christmas because I have a... I'm using a Christmas mug. It was um, the only clear kind of mug I could find that was in our cupboard. And I wanted to be able to show you guys what it looked like. So, now after evaluating this hot chocolate, if I would have known what I know now... I would have picked this as my favorite in the last video. Yeah, so definitely if you come across these Cusco bars somewhere, maybe um, at like a, an international type of grocery, I would definitely give it a try. Recommend it. You like it? It's kind of tasteless, but it's still good. Tasteless, but good. <laughs> yes. Kids. Hmm. All right, so let's get on with it. We do have this box this month. Um, so we don't know yet what country is in here. And we are going to open it up with you and find out at the same time. And this is July's Exploration Crate, even though we're pretty close to August. Um, we just didn't get around to making this video right away. But, yeah, so... He's going to quickly get this open. Quickly. <laughs> that guy said that. Quickly. I love that. Mm -hmm. you grab okay. The drum roll. <laughs> That's a drum roll. <laughs> really? It's July. Fourth of July. July 4th. Yeah. So what country yes, do we get? USA! 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 USA. USA. <laughs> yeah, we're dorks. Perfect. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah. I bet you there's some good stuff in here. And then, of course, we have our facts about our country that we live in. 326 million people. Wow, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Um, and our language is English. Imagine that. Yeah, who knew? But yeah, so this should be 
interesting. Okay. So the first thing on our list here is Roosters Gourmet Popcorn Garlic Beer Flavor. And usually I show you guys the description, but I can't reach. I have T-Rex arms. And I can't reach to show you guys. So, he's going to hold up the item. I'm going to read you what the description says. So, Rooster's Gourmet Popcorn is a company that is based out of South Jordan, Utah. They make fantastic gourmet popcorn that comes in 50 flavors and counting. 50 flavors. They range from sweet to savory and everything in between with many flavors that are gluten free. We have given you their garlic beer flavor, which sounds really, Thank you. really good. Okay. Don't worry, parents. There is very little beer flavor in there, and it tastes more like a savory garlic breadstick. So I'm really anxious to try this. It sounds really good. I'm not a... I don't like to drink beer. I don't like the taste of beer like that. But I do like putting beer in when I cook, like, corned beef or um, when you make, um, what do you call it, like cheese fondue beer goes really well in there i've never had beer well you better not have mm. i smell that too mm. definitely taste the garlic i i really don't taste beer definitely garlic but it's really good. It's really flavorful and garlicky, buttery. I, I taste like the the garlic, a garlicky butter. Yeah. What I just said. Yep. <laughs> it's good. Garlic spice butter. Mmm. That's, That's good, you guys. So Roosters pop gourmet popcorn from Utah. And that's where, um, actually, these exploration crates come from. They are literally hand-packed by the owner of this company um, who lives in Utah. So, very cool. All right, the next thing is Huckleberry Gems. Huckleberry. Huckleberry Gems. Huckleberry Gems. Huckleberry. So, while you look for that... Um, Huckleberry Gems come from the Idaho Candy Company. This is what they look like, if that helps you. Uh-oh, you guys. You didn't get it. There's no, like, candy bar type of thing? Okay. Huckleberry Gems. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. Um, Cup of Gold. We do have that. This fun candy is a local gem in California, where its creator, the Hoffman Candy Company, is from. It's a new fun take on chocolates like the Reese's Cup, although this chocolate has toasted almonds and a gooey marshmallow center. Ooh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. It does, you guys. Although, I think I want to take a sip of some water to get that garlic -iness. Does my breath stink now? <sighs> oh. Thank you. Thank you both. You're welcome. It does look like a Reese. Cup of gold. Ooh. Cup of gold. See? Definitely could not have oh. this on keto. Look at that. With the Gooey. Gooey marshmallow. Deliciousness. Okay. You want to just... Alright, so... That's what it looks like inside. And I'm just going to take a bite. I can't take a mm. bite. I have to get it off the paper. Mmm. 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 Mm. Delicious. Okay. It's alright. I have never seen these in the store. I taste like 
It's, it reminds me of a macaroon. Have you seen these in the store? Coconut. Well, no, it's like a specialty place. It's a specialty shop. We probably don't get them out this way. Oh. <laughs> I wish we did. He's a little Polish. And blonde. Oh, could you tell? No. What do you think about it, Lily? That was good. Yeah. Yummy. It definitely, I, it, did, did it say it had coconut in it? Toasted almond, almonds and gooey marshmallow. I, like I said, I feel like it tastes like a chocolate uh, macaroon. It's like a texture of coconut in there. But, yeah, it was good. Not a, Definitely not a Reese's cup. <laughs> I'm joking. Not checking it out. Okay. Grippo's barbecue chips. Okay. All right. Many people from the Midwest and on will tell you that Grippo's is the best barbecue chip around. These little beauties can pack a little kick to the back of the throat, though. Uh oh. That sounds painful. So have some water ready. <laughs> Grippo's hails from Cincinnati, Ohio, whoop, whoop, and has been around for over 80 years. I lived in Cincinnati for about five years, and I love it there. Yeah. It's so pretty. Um, all right, Grippo's. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I definitely remember seeing these Grippo's chips there. So let's see. I mean, they don't smell like spicy hot. They smell barbecue-y. Which one is the smallest? I taste sweet. There's a little bit of heat. They probably feel it more than I do. I, li I love hot, spicy things. So my threshold's probably a little <laughs> better. Yeah, there's a bite to it. <laughs> no, it's they're spicy. so good. They're good, you guys. If you like, <laughs> if you like hot, spicy, more water, and you are in the Cincinnati area. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen these around here locally, but I like those. I like them a lot. They are good, but they are very spicy. Very. Okay. On to the next. Oh, no. I hope these aren't little. Oh, no, no, no. Forget it. Okay, I was thinking corn nuts. <laughs> like, no, no more corn nuts. Beer nuts. Cantina mix. Can I have these? Yes. Contrary to the name, these peanuts have no beer in them. They were so named because people who drink beer often wanted a tasty, salty snack to go with it. Beer Nuts is based out of Bloomington, Illinois, and is still a family-owned business. We have provided you with the Cantina Mix, which has black beans, sriracha, chili, lemon, and their tasty original peanuts. Mmm. I like Beer Nuts brand nuts. I love nuts of a bunch of varieties. I like the packaging. Yeah. Did you show them the packaging? I did. Okay. Would you like to have some? Why is the hole so small? So we don't make a mess? Yeah. But I can't get anything out of it. Shake it. It's... That's way too small. <laughs> Cut it more. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, the way everybody can kind of grab what they want to try. I don't know if I can show you. Can you see you guys? <laughs> see, there's like kind of hard to show nuts. Things. But, yeah. So, Variety of colors and shapes. And so to remind us what we're eating here, they said black beans. I mean, peanuts, 
But what are these? I don't know. These are like a crackery type of thing here. Alright. Not sure. The green. You just ate the green thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're I've good. had these before. You have. Yeah. Well, not all these, but this. They're pretty good. I mean, I think, um, yeah. I've only had probably like the regular standard <laughs> beer nuts. Um, so these cantina flavored ones are pretty good. I would definitely eat them. But again, I like. I love nuts and like nut mixes and things like that. So yeah, tasty. Go for it. They have a flavor. I, mean, I don't know if their Cantina mix is a flavor that I recognize. I mean, well, Cantina is known for like you know Mexican, Spanish. So the flavors that they're using in there, that's why they're calling it Cantina. Chili, lemon, sriracha. Um, Lime. Yeah. Guacamole, okay. Right. Yeah. I can see that now. Spanish type of flavors. Yeah. All right. So the next thing on our list, Freestone Pickles. Pickles. We have a pickle. No. Oh, we do have a pickle. We have a pickle. These single serve pickle pouches pickle? are from Freestone Pickles. Wait. Okay, I can't read. The single serve pickle pouches are from Freestone Pickles based in Bangor, Mich Michigan. I don't even, I, we're from Michigan. Michigan. I've never heard of Bangor, Michigan. Have you? I have no. not. And no. I've traveled Michigan extensively. Right. Truck driver. I mean, he's been all over. Bangor. Who knew? These pickles come in several flavors and sit in their brine solution for over three months to lock in that Freestone flavor. I have a feeling this is going to get a bit of messy. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't prepared for a pickle. <laughs> I know. So how are we going to I do this? Juice everywhere. We're all just going to have to take a bite each. These are the pickles. Just the way it's going to have to be, you know? Okay. That's a big pickle. We have a pickle. <laughs> it smells like a pickle. It looks like a pickle. Take a bite of pickle. Mmm. pickle? I love pickles. Wow. I like it. I love pickles. Wow. I like it. I don't know. I mean, oh. it says it's just like a dill pickle. It's really strong, though. Yeah. Really salty. A lot of pickles that are pre-packaged like this would have a flavor like a, you know, like a hot pickle or um, something like that, but. Well, it has a flavor. It's dill. Dill pickle is a flavor. Oh. oh. But I don't know if it's because it's, see, I don't care for the pickles that are. Um, in the jars, like down the condiment aisle. I like the fresh pickles, like the Clausen's type of pickles that you buy in the refrigerated section. Or even Aldi's has a really yummy um, type of pickle that they sell in their refrigerated section. So, you know, for me, to me, I, I don't know. There's just something about the pickles that are in jars that, you know, sit in a brine and aren't refrigerated. It loses some of that fresh cucumber crispin crispiness, I guess. So, I mean, it was okay, but I just, I wouldn't buy pickles like that myself. And I'm sure you see them all over the place at truck stops. Do you ever buy pickles like that? I have not. It's convenient. I like the single-serve packaging, but I don't buy pickles like that. I, I get them in the jar. I have a refrigerator in the truck, so I eat them like that. But, I don't know. I don't know why I don't, but it kind of okay. shows why. I don't like it. 
So the next thing is Cowtown cookies. We so we like found cookies. our missing item. Cookie. That's the missing item. The cookies? No. Oh. Well, I think we so we'll go back to the one that we couldn't find earlier. So we Cowtown cookies. cookies shaped like cows. Ah, you got the moo moo. We have the moo moo. You got the moo moo. We got the moo moo. Chocolate cow shaped cookies. <laughs> Um, shaped like cows, these fun animal cracker style cookies have a sweet chocolate flavor. Their creator, Tina, hi Tina, we don't know Tina, was from New York City but moved to San Antonio, Texas to live the quiet life. She baked up and sold these cookies at a rodeo. They were a hit and the rest is history. Okay. Okay. Animal crackers, but there are... Chocolate. But they are moo moo. Moo moo. Moo moo cookies. Mmm. That are cow cookies. They smell like cocoa mix. I mean, they're chocolate animal crackers. We're good. Like Dry. It. I'm not sure. I like them. <laughs> I like them. I like them. Well, they might be you. better, like, kind of dipped in milk or something, but. I mean, they have a decent chocolate. They're not overly sweet. They have a good cocoa flavor to them. They need frosting. <laughs> <laughs> or, a, or, or sugar. Yeah, or some <laughs> more sugar. Milk. Yeah. Mm, I think they're good. I don't always like something overly sweet. He loves things to be very, very sweet. Um... But so I think they're okay. I don't know, like if I was at a rodeo and I had to pick from, um, like I don't know, Pickle. what might they have at a rodeo? Like Pickle. corn dog. Pickle. Like yeah, corn dogs or you know concession type of food or a bag of animal crackers. <laughs> I wouldn't be buying the animal crackers. But. Anyways, let's move on to. The last thing, which was actually the second thing that he could not find. We found it. Yes. Oh. Huckleberry gems. Huckleberry oh. gems. But see, listen to the description again. Okay. Listen. I'm listening. Huckleberry gems come from the Idaho Candy Company. Idaho Spud. Mm. <laughs> um, which is based in, you guessed it, Idaho. Idaho. Yes. They have been around since the early 1900s. This snack is a sweet huckleberry and marshmallow filling with a milk chocolate coating. So more chocolate and marshmallow, which personally, I love those two combined. It sounds good. Yeah. Did you read the description before? No. Then how would I put two and two together when you... I read like the beginning of it. You said Huckleberry Gems and this Huckleberry says Idaho Gem. Spud. I did read some of the description. But I did Folks, I think I've been hornswoggled. Because I don't think I hornswoggled. made... Hornswoggled? Yeah, because I don't think I Who made the mistake. Who says hornswoggled? I just did. I think I've been hornswoggled because I thought my husband was 46 year old, but if he's saying things like hornswoggled, Listen, um, Ma, you're like, Ma, you're like 80. Ma, I never I heard that Ma, word. Ma, take a bite. Mm -hmm. I never heard that word in my life. Hornswoggled. Hornswoggled. What are you guys saying? I don't know. It's so weird. That's very weird. What am I? Ooh. It's mushy. Squishy. Squishy. Ooh. Ooh. No. Ooh. I don't think this is going to go well. This is not like stretchy marshmallow. This looks like that Ooh. one from the Korea box. Let me show them. Well, hurry up. Oh. Okay. No. It's... It's spongy like... It feels very weird. When I tore off a piece I did, it felt very strange. But, taste good. Marshmallowy. 
with a chocolate exterior and a Coco coconut. Coconut. It does it actually taste really good. Yes. My favorite, except that gold uh, Reese looking thing. This is good. Hmm. One more? Yes. So this I'm going to say, well, I don't know. I really like the garlic beer popcorn too. But this is pretty good. I would say that was my favorite. Lily? The cow cookies. The cow cookies was her favorite. Mm-hmm. So on that note... <laughs> she gives more cow cookies. Uh-oh. Hi. Tell when to sign off. <laughs> Sorry, you're still talking. Okay, so... I'll have to say that this was my favorite, which was, what was it? The Huckleberry Gem, of all things. The name is so weird. Because, I don't know, it has nothing to do with... I'm your Huckleberry. He's my something, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so that's it. Our last exploration crate. I guess it's almost kind of fitting to... Have our last one be the USA. But I promise you that if you like watching these type of videos, we are going to be coming back with something that we are able to consume. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be just as fun. It was great. Thank you folks for watching. Yep. We love you guys. And until the next time. Soon. See ya. Bye.